Let me go back to your question about yeah, imagination versus truth. So, so um, I, I, I've been kind of talking about the future long enough to know that whatever I say about the future will be wrong. Hmm. You really can't predict the future. It's way too complicated. Again, as I was saying, you could, the best you can do is kind of talk about the outer realm of what's possible and then not be surprised by it. But, but it's, it's, these complex systems are just inherently stochastic. They're inherently unpredictable. And um, the, hard, the further out we go, the harder it is. However, I do believe that there are trends that are built into the very nature of the physics of, in chemistry that will dictate a certain course of development in technology. Meaning that my bet is, is that if we talk to all the other civilizations in our galaxy, we would begin to see that there is a developmental pattern that civilizations would go through, that they would you know, do sewing and then pottery and, you know, that there would be a progression and they would, as soon as they invented radio waves, they would have the satellites, you know, and you would go through a certain pro progression uh, like you would develop any other um, organism. And that is because of, there's constraints about what can happen just in the physical world. Um, as an aside, which we come back to later, I think the most remarkable molecule in the universe is DNA. There aren't very many molecules in the universe that are possible to arrange themselves in mm. sufficient numbers of stable variations that could build upon each other. There may be two or three. There may be more than we could invent but there's only one or two that could self-organize at the same time. So this is a molecule. Not only does it have this kind of flexibility and stability at the same time, but can self-organize that? There's just, just, we've looked, and there just aren't that many choices. So that suggests that even other life in the universe is likely to be DNA-ish. Hmm. That's a controversial statement. But if that's so, and particularly if that's so, I think there is kind of um, constraints, positive constraints on what is possible. So if we had more of a data set, we could say more about where things were going because we'd have more than N1 case. But with N1, we can't really predict, but we, we can try to uh, not be surprised. However, um, I do know that when we want to make something complicated, something good that's complicated and very, very complex that it becomes, it's easier to do if we imagine it first. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to kind of go to a very complicated future that we don't imagine first, that we're going to get there. So I believe that what I'm trying to do is really not to predict the future, but to imagine a positive future that we want to aim for. Because what Hollywood gives us and most science fiction is dystopia. Mm -hmm. It's actually very hard to imagine any positive scenario of the future that's on the planet Earth, if Star mm -hmm. Trek doesn't count, that's positive. And I think that makes it harder to arrive there. And I have to say, though, that trying to imagine a future where there's ubiquitous AI and commonplace genetic engineering and constant tracking of everything it's hard to imagine a future that we want from that but i don't think it's impossible i just think that we have to get better at imagining it and so um you're right that i see my role not in trying to predict and be correct but to try to help us imagine a positive future that we want 